So guess what? We might have baby goats in the spring. Charlie, do you know her? You and Brian are now going to have goats? No, my goats. My goats. My goats are silver. My girl goats. Huh? Yeah, I'm at goats. Yeah, I'm at goats. I love my goats. I love my goats and my chickens. All right, let's go to Numbers chapter 20. Numbers chapter 20. Just got done with 19. We were dealing with the red heifer, right? Everybody yeah. get that? The red heifer is Israel. It's a tough portion. The best thing about Israel is Christ. Came from Israel, right? Yeah. Best thing about you is what? Christ. Christ yeah. we're not, none of us are friends without Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. People don't realize that. Best friend you ever have in your life. Your eternal friends. These are, yeah, you guys are going to be, we're all going to be together for, for eternity. Amen. People don't, you, you know, we take that light, but that's the way it's going to be. We're going to be friends for eternity. Uh, we might as well start to put up with each other now. Oh, Stop so getting all mad at each other, you know. Guess what? You know, it's going to be like that. You know, we get mad at each other, but people don't realize we're going to be living with each other for eternity. Yeah. Start liking each other now. Amen. We all know God's rules. We don't have to mess with them. Amen. So uh, in chapter 20, um, in 19, of course, he, he was talking about in the very uh, at the very end of it, you know, with the red heifer, he said, uh, he turned around, he was talking about being unclean. He was talking about a soul being cut off in verse number uh, uh, 20. Uh, you don't. You want to purify yourself so you're not cut off. You see what he's trying to say is, look, you go. Things happen. Things happen in time. These these people when the when the tabernacle is not up and it's closed up, they got to have a way to get the tabernacle back open just in case something was to go on. You know. So what they do is they take the heifer, they take the ashes, they put it in water, they store it, and just say, you know, we're walking down the road. We got those. We, all of a sudden, here comes uh, Jan. She decides she wants to say bad words and, <laughs> and, and things. And now she's unclean or something like that. Or she did something and she's unclean. She dead body was next to her. Okay, we got somebody coming in. No, we don't. All right. So uh, and uh, and and she got to get clean and, and the tabernacle ain't open. So we got to get the ashes out and dunk her in water or something like that. And hey man, it's uh the Lord's good to us. The Lord is good. Mm -hmm. So now we're going into twenty and, and twenty is a popular because now uh they're it's just like uh thirty seven years later from uh the moment they went into uh Numbers chapter thirteen. He said go take the land and uh and we're in chapter twenty from thirteen and those seven chapters actually is a accomplishes accomplishes about thirty six to thirty seven years. Isn't that something? We're already in, we're near the, we're near, still in numbers. And uh, we're going to have uh, some more chapters to go through. And uh, we're already, we got 30, in the 30s, and we're already now in, back in Kadesh, 37 years later. Amen. And uh, see how time, uh, let's face it, time creeps up on you. Time does, it creeps up on you. But yesterday I was playing, I was grabbing on bumpers with my friends and being drugged down and uh, we were, you know, in the snow playing bumper oh, yeah. and uh, that was fun and here we are out there sledding and now I can, I can barely get off the couch. <laughs> Amen. Woke up one day and now I feel like I'm 30, I'm in my 60s or something. That's somebody. That's Donna. Ghost. Amen. Come on. Hold on. We just started. We're going to wait a few minutes. Nice. You did that, didn't you? Yeah. That's gorgeous. Well, we don't. Well, we can't hear. Just bring it in. Just bring it in over here. Am I late? No, you're fine. Just five minutes. What time is it? It's seven. Seven to five. You're fine. Come on in. Come on, Donna. You don't worry. Don't worry about Where am I supposed to put this? Just bring it over here. I'll take it. <laughs> I got another one. Oh. Okay. I'll just one. Here.
Amen. So uh, this is this is now 37 years later. We're back in Kadesh in the book of Numbers. Remember, you got Exodus sets it all up. They come out. They're in the wilderness. It's a pretty fast time goes on in Exodus. Like boom, Exodus is is a fast book. And then you go into Leviticus. Leviticus was written and put out in 30 days. That is one big proof that no man could have wrote this book. That's right. There's no way a man could have wrote Leviticus. Amen. I mean, I can barely understand it and read it. So, you know, they were had to get it in 30 days, and then the book of Numbers, 39 years. See the difference in it? And then we're going to get, we still got Deuteronomy, and Deuteronomy is another fast book where they're standing there just, they're excited just to run into that promised land, you know? And, but we got to get through some stuff first. And that stuff is right here in Numbers. And uh, they're back there, back in Kadesh. Uh, and the, this is uh, chapter 20, starts out with a murmuring. And the Bible says in verse number 1, Then came the children of Israel, even the whole, notice, even the whole congregation. That's a lot of people. Bigger than two-something million people out there. He says, even the whole congregation into the desert of Zin in the first month, and the people abode in Kadesh. And Miriam died there and was buried there. And there was no water for the congregation. They gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron. And the people chode with Moses and spake, saying, Would God that we had died when our brethren died before the Lord? And why have you brought us brought up the congregation of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our cattle should die here, should die there. And wherefore have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us in unto this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs or of vines or of pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Father, bless thy word tonight, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. And uh, now they're back in Kadesh. You notice it's Kadesh again. They started in Kadesh. That's where they were in Numbers 13. He told them, go in. We know that they, they kind of... Screwed up at, uh, in Numbers 13. What God told them, just go in the land, possess the land. They could have just got, think about this. God said, go in, it's yours. They could have walked in, they could have been doing the Egyptian walk, basically, and dancing in that place. There was nothing anybody could have done. Why? God said it. Yeah. Yeah. And what did they do? They said there was giants in there, and they didn't want to go in. But here's the big thing that people didn't realize. God told them what to do, go in the land. What did they do? They, they said, we're going to send a, a a group up there. So God tells him, he says, send up a search party. What did Moses say to send up? He said, go spy out the land. Yeah, right. He didn't say, said, search party goes in the land, they ask questions. Okay, if somebody sends a search party, we would go in, we'd take a, a thing of paper, we'd interview people, a search party. We'd go in, we talk to people, hey, how's everything going here? What's this? That's what God said. Okay, you want to send people? He got downgraded a little. Okay, do a search party. What did Moses say? Go spy on the land. Right. What's that mean? Now you're going to send a basically a recon patrol in there. No, you're not going to engage any. Uh, you're going to keep from engaging the enemy, even though they wouldn't matter anyway. And basically, you're being a little deceptive with it. No contact, no nothing. They went through the land. What did they do? They spied it out. What did God say? Just go take the land. You got to understand something. God gives you. God turns around and gives you instruction, and he. Do you ever notice that God gives you moments the easiest way? Yeah. And then you have to go with put man in it. You know what man does? He complicates the obvious. Amen. Yeah. Amen. We, we all know God told us to pray. Think about this. God told us to pray. And he says, you, how do you pray? He tells you how to pray. Back in the old, even in the old times, he said, talk to me. Basically, talk to me. And what happens when, when we got in the church house? Next thing you know, there's some guy getting up and saying, hey, you, you, you can say our father a thousand times. Uh, what else happens? They, next thing you know, God, they were going by the creeds of men. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and Jesus Christ is on. I can go, you can do those things left and right. They're creeds of men. What does that mean? You don't get saved by the creeds of men. You get saved by the word of God. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by what? The word of God. Okay, so there's the difference. And I just got the good time of ruining that, and I'm happy about it, I guess. I don't know. I uh, get, I but <laughs> let's look at this, and he says in verse number one, and Miriam died. And she died there. Where? In the in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. She dies, she lives in the wilderness, and guess what? She died in the wilderness. God doesn't want us in the wilderness. He wants us with the people, not in the wilderness. He wants you to be out of the wilderness. See, but Miriam, she lives in the wilderness, and guess what? She died in the wilderness. Remember, she was the one that got jealous and envy. She got envious of Moses and uh, tried to pull Aaron against Moses. Aaron, uh, we're going to notice that most of the priests in the in the Bible, what are they? They're, they 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 kind of give in to the people. Didn't you notice that? Yeah. They give in to the people. You got to watch the the, the uh, priests and stuff. But here's the thing I noticed. Look at that end of that last verse. Now this is, you have to realize something. This is 37 years later. You know what else this is? It's not the same people. This is almost like a new generation of people. Watch how they are. Check this out. Miriam dies, right? The end of the verse. And there was no water for the congregation, and they gathered together. Now, what did you miss in there? Where's the sympathy? Yeah. Yeah, nothing. Let me ask you, where's the sympathy for Miriam? You know why it's not there? Because they're all worried about themselves. Never thought about it. I mean, even if she wasn't bad, even if one little incident, that shouldn't change somebody. I mean, come on. How many of you have people in your family have one little incident, and then all of a sudden they die? You don't turn around and go in there, hey, man, you... Well, you know, the person was an idiot and did this to me, and, you know, whatever. Uh, yeah, Why? Because, let's face it, that usually Stay. strings a chord in you. Yeah. You know? It strings a chord. Not to mention, who wants to go in with that kind of mouth? Right. Mm -hmm. Let's face it, we know how to act, and what manner should, a, should you be with your conversation? You don't want to be evil spoken of. Right. Amen. So, uh, there's no sympathy, and that caught me there. Uh, the first thing they said, there's no water. Now, look at this. And there's, there was no water for the congregation. They gathered themselves together. And what's the first thing they do? They start going after uh, Moses. And now, here's the problem I have with this. Why don't they just start digging for wells? Yeah, right? Yeah. They had wells before. You, you ever notice they said there's no food, there's no water, there's no that. They get to another place, there's no water. Then there's no, no food. And, they, and you realize that what, they didn't even think about this. If you'll notice down there, it says there's no water for us and our cattle. Why did you, last time they needed food, why don't they just eat the cattle? cattle? Right? You know, you have to understand. Is it, is it, is it that there are those, these things, or is it the problem of the people? The people. You know, you get people, look, it's somebody like Don, she's not been in church her whole life. You guys all been in church your whole life, right? Here's the, you don't realize... All the problems come from within. Yeah. Yeah. Within. It's not the outside. It's within all the time. Yeah. You know, that's why I always say it. It's like a place that's that's being run by a bunch of fifth graders all messing up. We're all fifth graders messing up, you know? I swear. And uh, there's no water. Now, uh, what's the first thing that people do? Look at it says that the people chode. The people chode with Moses. They start getting upset. They start uh, murmuring. They start complaining. Isn't that what they do all the time? Here's the problem I see. Instead of instead of faith, they should they chode, which is chiding. They chide. They chode. Okay. The people chode with Moses, and they, they said, "What God? What, what, what God would have put us out here?" Now look what it says. When our brethren died before the Lord, you, you know who they're talking about? They're talking about Korah. Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. It was uh, Dathan and Abiram from the Reubenites. Oh, we're the number one. We're the number one son. We're the no, We're the oldest. We're the ones, not the Levites. It should have been us. And then they made they grabbed Korah and Korah. He's a priest. So what is he? He's a Kohathite. He's on the inside. You ever notice that? Like I said, the priests 
seem to always bend to the people. Mm. All the time. Aaron got so bad, he started making an idol for the people. Right. I'll give him some kind of worship, you know. And then later on, even in Nehemiah's way after this time, in Nehemiah, Nehemiah goes back for two years. He goes back to uh, Artaxerxes. Comes back, and who's in? The, the two enemies, Zambalai and Tobiah. One of them sitting in the temple, and he's the treasurer. Two years later. Yeah. Where's the priest? He let him in. Yeah. Nehemiah, what's the first thing he does? He starts preaching them out. Yeah, amen. Get out. Amen. You know? Unbelievable how we are. Okay? But, um, you know, it says here they, they, that they would have died, be, the brethren that would have died before us. And he says, and why have ye brought up, brought up the congregation of the Lord? <laughs> they didn't even know who were they were. And now all of a sudden they're the congregation of the Lord, like God's on their side. And he says, what if, why would you have ye brought up the congregation of the Lord into this a wilderness that we and our cattle should die there. <laughs> I mean, I'd rather, I think that the only thing I think on this is I'd rather have died than be in the wilderness. Right. Uh, you know, you got to understand something. These are people that are on the inside. These are the church people. And you know what? They're living in the wilderness. That's the thing. And the wilderness, as you remember, they call it Zin this time, but before they called it the wilderness of what? Sin. Mm. It was called the wilderness of sin. Amen. So uh, go on and it says, And wherefore why ye, uh, have you made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us to unto this evil place? Like Egypt was a, uh, was a great place. The flesh pots and all that stuff that was great in Egypt. Oh, not to mention they had leprosy in Egypt and we brought that out, you know, and all the common diseases that we brought out of Egypt. Oh, we were living in, that was a great place. <laughs> and uh, slavery, yeah, yes, slavery was great. It was well. Look at today. We want to go back to. We want to go back to it, right? And they're right. saying, "Well, it's a great thing. We'll just be like Venezuela, you know. We'll eat trash." Yeah, there you just, go. like no, but our 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 type of socialism is going to work. It never worked before, but all of a sudden they got this great idea. It's going to work now, right? <laughs> <laughs> Verse number six, and Moses and Aaron, they went from the presence of the Lord, of the, uh, from the presence of the assembly, unto the door of the tabernacle. So the tabernacle's there, of the congregation. And what did they do? They fell on their face. That's the difference between Aaron, uh, Moses and Aaron and the people. When that, Moses and Aaron had a problem, where'd they go? They went to the Lord. Where'd the people go? They went to the preacher to yell at them. That's what you're going to find even in a church house. They go after the preacher. Yeah. And, but you know where, what they really, they don't really get to the preacher. You know what they always do? I can tell you what they do here. They go after her. Yeah. Why? Because it's easy to have the, the pastor's wife for dinner. You ever hear that? It's called roasting the pastor's wife for dinner. No. They go home and they have the pastor's wife for dinner. Everybody that ever got upset in here and started something, guess where it all started? They all went after her. Why? That's what the congregations like to do. Go after the weak. They go after the weaker vessel. Right. That's what they do. You know. Yeah. Amen. Okay. So, uh, but look with him. They fall on their face, uh, and and this is the thing. They're humble, right? Mm -hmm. They get humble, and when they got humble, look what happens. The glory of the Lord appeared unto them. Amen. You know, God gives grace to the who. The okay, and there's the example that's right there that God gives him grace. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 7, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron thy brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes. And it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth to them water out of a out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, 
Hear now, ye rebels. Must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly, and the congregation drank, <coughs> and their beasts also. Okay. We all know the story, okay? We all know, and I don't tell you how it's preached, and I, and I really, it's a good preaching, and I preach it too. Uh, you can't hit Jesus twice. He, he was smitten after, you, after he's been smitten. Uh, it's just time to talk to him. He can only smite him once. He was only crucified once. After that, we, we speak to him. And that's a great preaching. I don't think that's what's happening here, and I'm going to show you what's going on. Now, I think that's a great preaching, and yes, I do preach. Just so you know, I preach that too. That's a good spiritual piece. But I'm talking about on the level of man to man and what's going on right here. It's not that you got to understand. There's that thing of what we see spiritually in the picture of, and then there's actually what's going on. Mm -hmm. Okay, what's going on? Uh, there's a lot. Just so you know, there's pictures in your life. If we were someday when God shows us our lives, we're going to see the pictures of those things spiritually that are in our lives. But for us, we don't see that. It's no different for them. You, you got to now get into the situation and get down there and be right there. Number one, this is a beautiful, this is beautiful English. He says, take the rod, the definite article. What rod? Well, you say Moses had a rod. No, this is Aaron's rod, I bet you. Why? He said, take the rod. Where? The one that budded. Why? Because that's Christ. Remember, the rod, it has to die and that they get life out of it. And it gives life to who? And it gives gift and life to, to the age, the almonds. It gives life and it blossoms to the young men. And then it has buds for the little children. It brings them all out. Uh, God wants you to bring fruit. It's dead. He wants to bring fruit out of something dead. That's what God does. Why is that? Well, that's what he did. He brought you out of it, didn't he? Out of what? Something that was dead and, and became alive. Who's that? Jesus. Amen. Amen. So he takes the rod. Which is that rod that we that we know of, and uh, uh, that was uh, in back in Numbers chapter seventeen, okay, and the sign of the resurrection, and he gathered the assembly. He says, and he tells them, he says, go speak to the rock before their eyes. Tell them of, of the resurrection, basically, and it, and and it shall give forth whose water? Whose water? What do you mean? His water is supposed to be it. What about that? It's a rock. It's a, it's its water. Why is it his water? Because that rock is who? Jesus. Amen. It's pretty easy. Pretty easy. How do you know it's Jesus? Well, let's remember, in, uh, it tells you that in Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. That rock. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, what does it say? That rock that followed, and that rock was what? That rock was Christ. Amen. This is how you show, you show Jewish people who that rock is. You say, look, it, here's who the rock is. Uh, where do you show them? Well, we go over to Corinthians. No, no, they're Jewish people. Where do you go? Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7. It's the Old Testament. And I think that they'll learn who the rock is. Okay? And uh, so Moses, he, he, uh, he tells them to go over there and speak to it. And uh, it shall give forth his water. And thou shalt bring forth uh, to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts a drink. And Moses took that rod. He took the rod from before the Lord. Now that's how you know. He took the rod that was before the Lord. Okay? The Lord ain't there. The Lord ain't there. The Lord's in the tabernacle, my friend. And he says, before the Lord. He gives you an actual place. Where's that? In the Holy of Holies. Where's What's in the Holy of Holies, that rod? How do you know? Hebrews. Right. Hebrews tells you what's in that what's in that room. The manna is the the manna, the censer, and the rod of Aaron. So he has to go pick it out before the Lord brings it in, okay? And uh, brings that rod, and uh, and Moses takes that rod that was there, and and Moses and Aaron they gather the congregation together before the rock that he told them, and he said unto them, "Hear now, you rebels." Must. You really want to say that? Must we who? Who are you talking about? Must we fetch you water out of this rock? Well, who are you talking about, Moses? What's this we thing? 
What is that, you and Aaron? You're getting the water for the people? Is that how it works? I thought it was coming out of that rock. What are you getting it for? Who's the provider here is what it comes down to. It's God who's the provider. That's why he had to speak to it. Hey, you want something in your life? You think you're going to smack some rock yourself? Or do you think you're just going to ask God? You're God's people. You went past the smiting. Now it's time to get serious with God. Right. To talk to him. Amen. I don't see... I don't, okay, show me that part in here in verse number 10. Uh, and Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock and they prayed. They turned to God. They, repent, they repented and prayed to him. You know why? It's not in there. <coughs> it's not in there. Now, I don't know if you picked this up. I did. I wrote, I, 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 I did this now. If you realize there's no quotes to tell you where he starts to speak, but he speaks right there. The first word is here. Now, from the word here, count to the rock how many words you got. On, you're better than that. Hear ye, you rebels. What do you got? 12. 13. Look again. 13. 13. What's the number of rebellion? 13. 13. Judas Iscariot. 13. John. John 13. It's always 13 is the number of rebellion. Hear ye, hear now ye what? Rebels. Rebels. Hear ye now, you rebels. Okay? Uh, here's the problem here. He told him to go speak to the rock. He's not speaking to the rock. He's speaking to the people. God said, go speak to the rock. He's speaking to the people, not God. Mm -hmm. And then he, he turns around and does this thing here. He says, and Moses lifted up his hand. And with his rod... Not the rod of the Lord, not the rod of Aaron. His rod now. It's all about him. And he turns around and he smacks it. He smoked that rock and had, he he's not even good at it once. How many times he hitting it? Twice. twice. People said he hit it. Well, it was once. Before. No, he it says he hit it twice right there. Yeah. He turns around and whacks it two times. Now God's faithful, and God brings water out of Ben abundantly. But now, of course, everybody says he shouldn't have smoked the rock. God told him to talk to it. And we understand that. But look what it says in 12. And this gives you the answer right here. This is what happened. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron. And guess what he says? Because. There's the reason. Why? Because ye believed me not. What's the problem? Lack of faith. Mm -hmm. What's yeah. the problem? Lack of that God could actually do it. Do you realize that most people don't think God can actually do the things he says he's going to do? I mean, seriously. How many times have you said, well, I don't think God's going to do that. I don't think God's going to heal that person. I don't think God's going to do You say these things in your heart. Why? Because it's just like the guy that comes up to Jesus and Jesus says the... Uh, by your faith, it do you have the do you believe? And the guy says, God turns to the Lord, you know what he said? He's honest. He says, Yes, I believe. Help me with my unbelief. 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 Yeah, amen. You see? Now, how do you help yourself with unbelief? It's easy. Faith cometh by hearing. Yeah. Hearing by the word of God. So what do you do? Grab your Bible, start reading. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> I got a lack of faith. How much do you read your Bible? How much did, did you get it? Do you get through it at least once a year or something? Like, I'm not saying that has to be the standard. That's my wife and I. That's our standard devotion is once a year we get through the Bible. Uh, if you'll notice, you go on our Facebook and stuff like that. I put out a Bible reading every single day. Why? You'll get through the Bible once a year if you keep reading on that calendar. Uh, that's what my, just so you know. That's my wife and I's devotion every morning. Yeah. That is exactly what we do. We go over that every morning, and that's what we read. Okay? Mm -hmm. Not that we're better than everybody else. No. It's just our devotion time. Right. Amen. Okay? And, uh, but he says, he turns around, he says, because you believed me not. Okay? So Moses, uh, <laughs> Moses puts himself in a problem right here. He's in a pickle, and um, he put... You gotta understand something. 
He says, now watch, to sanctify me, because you believe me not, to do what? To sanctify me, separate me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore, this wasn't about God. You know what the problem was? This was about Moses. Yeah. Look, Man. let me help you out a little. Go to chapter 7 of Acts. I'm going to show you something about... No, this is not the bust on Moses. Moses is a better man than all of us. Yeah, amen. Go to Acts chapter 7. <coughs> okay. Now. We're dealing with Moses here. Now look at verse number 23. Now Moses is a young guy, and it says, and when he was a full 40, what? 40 years, years old. He's 40 years old. He's in Egypt. He is, uh, he's in with Pharaoh. He was raised in that house and uh, had all that stuff, and he was educated there. He was a full 40 years old. He went down to visit his brethren, okay? Now watch, 24. Right there, Acts chapter 7, 24. And seeing one of them suffer wrong, he defended him. We all know the story. And avenged him that was oppressed and smote the Egyptian. We all know the incident, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, watch this. For he, Moses, supposed his brethren, the, the Hebrews, would have understood how that God, by his hand, Moses would deliver them, but they understood not. What are you trying to say? Moses already knew he was called yeah. at 40 years old. But what's the problem? Okay, here's the problem. Moses is 40 years old. God's call already called him, said he's going to deliver him, and Moses goes out and tries to push the issue. Okay? The wrong way. The wrong way. You think you're, what are you going to do, kill one Egyptian at a time and get it done? It's not going to happen. Okay, but he thinks he's the, the, he knows he's a deliverer. He knows he's called. But here's the thing: you got to understand. It's not until he's out in the wilderness for forty more years and he's on the backside of that mountain in the right place because that's where he was supposed to be. That God enables him, calls him, and says, "All right, now you're ready." You know what the problem was? There was too much Moses in the ministry. Yeah. At forty years old, there was going to be too much Moses. In the ministry for God. Why? Because God's going to use weakness to be strong. When you're weak, God's the strongest. How do you know? I know. I, I've watched it. I've watched it. You know, uh, there's some, some, I've watched people with good grave injuries. They, 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 they got good, in, they got big injuries and stuff like that. Figured, I'm worthless now. Oh, God, what's he going to do with me? I got a, a bad leg, bad arm, whatever. And you know what uh, happens? God uses that uses it more. Why? Because now you're weak. And guess what? Now he's strong. You have to rely on him now. Yeah, there's a lot of old people out there that think, oh, God's done with me. I can't do this. And God's sitting there going, I didn't say you were done. Yeah, right. Yeah. Amen. Just go about the normal things you do, and I'll make things happen. Yeah, right. Why? Amen. It's the best time. You, you can't do it on your own strength. Right. <laughs> Amen. 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 So, looking, uh, going, go, go back to, uh, uh, to Numbers. Go back to Numbers. I'm like, man, that's a wrong chapter. I was in Isaiah. <laughs> Amen. So he says, because you believed me not to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore... Ye shall not bring this congregation into the land which I have given you. You know what? When you spoke that, when you took that rod in that hand of yours, and you raised that rock thing up, and you spoke to those people, you took my power into your hands, and it became about you. Mm. Should we fetch you water? Bam! He told him to go speak to the rock. He went and spoke to the people and put the people in their place, and then he hit the rock. This is all about Moses. Yeah. It wasn't about him striking the rock. It was about 
the glory which he gave not God. Right. It's about taking over for the Lord and doing what you want. Okay? That's where it all came down to. All right? And, uh, and it's even backed up in, go to Numbers 27. Numbers chapter 27. Watch, it's, it's, it's always good to have the Bible tell you what, what, what happened. Look at, for, look at, start at verse number 12, 27, look at verse number 12. He says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Get thee up into the mount of Byron, and see the land which I have, I have given unto the children of Israel. And when thou hast seen it, thou also shalt be gathered unto thy people, as Aaron thy brother was gathered. Now watch, what, what happened? For... Why is that? For ye rebelled against my commandment in the desert of Zin, in the strife of the congregation, to sanctify me at the water at the water before their eyes. That is the water of Mirabah in Kadesh, in the wilderness of Sin. He tells you exactly what happened. What's the problem? You didn't sanctify me. You didn't set me apart. You took over, and it was all about you. It wasn't about me. There's the problem. Do you got the? Do you have it now? Yeah. What? He did he took over from the Lord. It was no longer the Lord's work. He's no longer the provider. I'm gonna fetch you the water. Don't think it doesn't happen. You know what pastors usually do, and I do it myself, and I find myself, I become the provider for the people. I keep trying to take over and take over and take over till finally it's all a mess and somebody says to me, you know, you shouldn't have done it to begin with. Right. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hey, look, Amen. we're on the hot. I gotta take care. I gotta take care of everybody. I gotta feed them and everything else. And God's sitting there going, you know, I was working with that guy. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I, I'm gonna tell you that's what most of us do with our kids. Yeah. Right. God wants to work with your kids, and you're sitting there. It, it's gonna happen. You're gonna get a little bit older. Uh, kids get a little bit older, and all of a sudden they start making mistakes. You know what we do? Instead of letting them get a little drowning in them. So they can get back up. You know, a person's better off when they're down to nothing if they're going to go down there anyway. But see what parents do is they keep pulling them up out of the water so they can take a breath. Yeah. Instead of letting them go until and let God pick them up. Yeah. yeah. You know the, what God's trying to say the whole time when they're in the mess? God's talking to them and saying, I'm over here. Yeah. He's just looking for them to reach up. And here comes us, the big parents. Moses. You're the Moses. You're coming over and keep, uh, let me take care of this for them. And guess what you just do? You just keep taking it out of the hands of God, taking it out of the hands of God. You're supposed to be a spiritual guy. You're not supposed to be, you know, you're not supposed to be their government. Right. I'm talking to big kids get older. That's what happens. Man becomes a man. Don't you think God wants to start working with them? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Uh, so, verse number 13. This is, this is the water of Meribah. This is the water of Meribah. Why is that? Because the children of Israel strove. You know what Mirabah means? Bitter. Yeah. Mary, the name Mary. It's, we think Mary, Mary, Mary. Quick and true, Mary. And you know what if God says that word means? Bitter. Mara. Bitter. This is the water of Mirabah. Because the children of Israel strove with the Lord. He was sanct and, and he was sanctified in them. Now, verse number 14, and Moses sent, and Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto the king of Edom. Who's Edom? Edom is, a, is, is named after a man, right? Mm -hmm. It means red. Who's that man? Satan. Uh, Satan. Jacob had a brother. What was his brother's name? Jacob had a brother. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. It says it all the time in Genesis chapter 25. It says, and Esau was Edom. There was two in there. One was the Jacob, and one was Esau. They're a picture of this. This is the picture of Esau and Jacob. You got the new man, and you got the old man. You got the man of the spirit, and the man of the flesh that are inside. And she, she's the church. Rebecca, she married Isaac, the bride. She's the bride of Christ, basically, the picture of the bride of Christ. And inside the bride of Christ, she has two people. What's that? She's got the old man and the new man. 
The flesh and the spirit. Can't see the picture? Yeah. Right. When you were born again, right? You're the new man, right? Okay. But you got an old man in you that keeps creeping up, making you do things, okay. right? Yeah. You know who that old man is? That's Esau. <laughs> He's your flesh that when sits there and says, Hey, 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 Denise, you know that, 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 that good rock and roll music you like? Yeah, keep playing it. Yeah. <laughs> I got a rockin' and a roller. Give me a hand. Hey, Amen. <laughs> so that's what uh, that's the look at it. You got the new birth and you got the worldly, the new birth man, and then you got the worldly man. Esau is the worldly man. He's the he's the picture of your flesh. Uh, I say it like this. Uh, Esau is actually because he comes from Rebecca and they're inside of her womb. They're part of the church. And I understand he's not he's not saved, but you gotta understand something. In the picture of the church, he would be a saved man that lives carnal. Okay. The carnal man. You're, you're gonna struggle inside. Paul said, Paul turned around and said, in my flesh, he said, dwell with what? No good no, thing. No good thing, amen. I don't want to do things I don't want to do, I'm doing. Yeah. Things that I should be doing, I ain't doing. Right. I, I think that's one of the weird. When I first read that, I was like, man, Paul's head spinning <laughs> when I read in chapter 7 of Romans. Until I start to realize, he's talking about me. Mm -hmm. Once it came on to me, I said, man, this is pretty important. I better read this right. and get it right. Okay? So, it's talking, it says, now watch 14. And Moses sent messengers from Kadesh unto king of Eden, Edom, Esau. Thus saith thy brother Israel. That's Jacob. His name was Israel after he wrestled with the Lord. Thou knowest all the travail that hath befallen us. How our fathers went down into Egypt, and we have dwelt in Egypt a long time. 430 years, right? And the Egyptians, they vexed us. They made us feel empty. They vexed us. That's vexed. They made us feel empty. And our fathers. And when we cried unto the Lord, <laughs> what did he do? He heard us. He heard our voice and sent an angel and hath brought and hath brought us forth out of Egypt. And behold, we are in Kadesh, a city in the uttermost, uh, uttermost of thy border. Let us pass, I pray thee, through thy country. We will not pass through the fields or through the vineyards. Neither will we drink of the water of the, well, of the wells. We will go by the king's highway. We will not turn to the right hand nor to the left until we have passed thy borders. So you know what he's looking for? A shortcut. They're up in that area. They're down towards... They're down towards the, the area of the Salt Sea, which is the Dead Sea. They're down, that's Edom. That's the Edom area right down there. Edom and Moab and all that area. They're coming through that area, and they, they see they don't want to go around. They say, what? It's easier if we just go right on through. It's a shortcut. So they ask his brother, hey, look, we're going to go through your area. Look, if it's, if it's, if it's uh, we're not going to touch anything. We're not going to destroy your land. You're like our brethren. Okay? Now... They're not brethren, you have to understand something, not brethren of the spirit, like we are, but they're brethren of the flesh. Right. Okay, they're brethren of the flesh. Okay, no different than Jesus in John chapter 7. He's in John chapter 7, it says the word brethren. So all of a sudden people start thinking it's spiritual brethren. No, he's talking about his own, his family, Mary and his brothers, and he's sitting, and, and, they're, and they, don't, they don't believe in him. They're telling him to go down to Jerusalem beforehand. And, uh, you know, go down there, big shot, saying that to Jesus. And, and Jesus turns around and says, they're my brethren. Now, what does that tell you? Well, once we get saved, we still got some family members. And guess what? They don't understand us. No. I was the first one saved in my family. I was, lead, I was such the oddball. Mm -hmm. I thought everybody was saved. And I was the only idiot that couldn't figure this whole thing out. But then when I started speaking to my family, I realized, hey, wait a second. I'm the only one. I'm the only one that was saved. Mm -hmm. and, and now I, I start talking to him. Okay, now go into verse 18 and look what it says. It says, and Edom said unto him, Thou shalt not pass by. Thou shalt not pass by me, lest I come out against thee with a sword. And the, and the children of Israel said unto him, We will go by the highway. And if I and my cattle drink of my water, then I will pay for it. 
I will only, without doing anything else, go through on my feet. Now you have to think about it. We're looking a little, we're looking a little too easy and narrow. We're talking about over two to three, maybe even more million people. When that water came out of that rock, it wasn't a little trickle. You got two million people. This ain't one little spring that's that's going on down there at uh, Blevins that's coming out of the ground. <laughs> right. Okay? Right. For two million people, this is like a river coming down. Right. Okay? So they can drink. This is a lot. Hey, I, I, I give it to you like this. When God blesses you, didn't you ever notice it's in abundance? Yeah. He didn't have to. You realize the only thing he promised you was him? Everything more over that is, is an incredible blessing. Yeah. Even to the point where David gives an observation. You know what observation he says? He says, my whole life, there's, there's some things I've never seen. And one of the things he said, he said, I've never seen the Lord's people begging bread. Mm. That's right. Isn't that something? Man, just to get food, man, just people, people are starving in India. What do I do? Get saved. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Sure. Why? Well, get bread. Sure. Think about it. Yeah. Yes. Amen. So he says, we'll pay for it. Look, uh, uh, verse 20, and, and he said, thou shalt not go through. And Edom came out against, against him with much people, with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his border, wherefore Israel turned away from him. I mean, I don't know if you've noticed something. I just looked at that whole thing. And, and there's one thing I noticed out of the whole thing. Again, there's no God in the passage. Right. Yeah. And that's something. Nobody went, oh, let's go to the Lord for this. Yeah. Well, let's go talk to the Lord about this. It's never in the passage. Yeah. They turn around and start doing, look, you got to understand something. People get committees together. You want to ruin anything, get a, get a committee. Yeah. Well, I always say, you know, I hear it all the time. We want to get a new, we're going to get a new pastor. Okay, what have you guys done? Well, we put a committee together. Oh, okay. Well, it wasn't prayer. We got a committee. You want to ruin anything in a church, get a committee. You want to, hey, look, get get the car, the carpeting. Uh, I'll tell you what, put it out to the church, get them all in there, and ask them what color they want. <laughs> you get a church split out of something as dumb as that. I, I got to tell you, Dewey Stewart was the smartest one. He's going to put carpet in the place. You know what he does? He goes in there and he says, oh, I'll ask a question. Uh, he says, uh, okay, we already, he, he goes in and he says, look, I bought brown and we bought, we bought carpet, we bought brown. Uh, who doesn't want it? <laughs> now, how can you say no to that? We already bought it. <laughs> right, right. Amen. I mean, I was like sitting there going, that was the smartest thing he ever did. If he would have turned around and said, well, we're going to get carpeting. What color do you want? It would have been a church split. They would have been fighting each other over oh, yeah. something dumb like that. Look, pastors get fired all the time over money. They get that everything happens over the, the carnal things. And then you got these guys that are sleeping around, these preachers all over the country, sleeping with this one, sleeping with that one. You know what? Nobody votes them out. No. What's the problem? They got their head in the wrong area. Yeah. yeah. Carnal things, carnal things, carnal things, not the spiritual things. The spiritual things are the things that count. Amen. That's when you get involved, not on the carnal thing. Uh, we had a, I had a preacher. He, he got, uh, he, he put money, wanted to get some of something that was very expensive. He went, he, he purchased. They told him to put money down. He put the money down. The guy left town. He sat there for 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. They questioned him for 45 minutes. I, I, I had enough. I got up. I said, this is a bunch of junk. Uh, so what? Who cares about money? My, my Lord, is he owns a thousand cattle in the hills. Yeah. If he wants to give you more money, give you more money. Yeah. Uh, we're living proof here. We could probably, God, we had nothing in the bank account with the bills due in two days. And God paid him. Yeah. Amen. In fact, you know what I did? I had it all. I put it. I put it like almost on automatic payment for two days later, without any money in the account, and money flew into the account the day before. We were back in, paid all the bills, and they were paid on time. On time. It was a. 
Those type of things. Now, you'll notice something about this thing of no God in the passage. Now, the, what I've noticed is they're going to get punished. Edom is going to get punished. You know where he's going to get punished? Go to Obadiah. Whoa, that's a big word. <laughs> okay. The, the book of Obadiah. It's one page. It's after Amos. Joel, Amos, and then Obadiah. What chapter? There is only one hundred. Eleven what month? I'm not. Sorry. Eleven eighty-seven. Girl. Yep. Can I read this to you, Mom? Thank you. I'm sure so. I don't know why I called you, Mom. I don't know, but I'm going to keep with it. <laughs> okay. Look at Obadiah. Let's get into this real fast. I got ten minutes. I got to get through a lot of scripture. Give me a little bit of, little, little bit of leverage here. He says, "The vision of Obadiah." Thus saith the Lord God concerning who? Edom. Edom. Who's that? Esau. Esau. Yeah. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and have ambassador is set among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Behold, I have made thee small among the heathen. Thou art greatly despised. The pride of thine heart. Edom hath deceived thee, thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? He's got pride, doesn't he? Mm -hmm. Thou shalt, thou that, though thou exalt thyself as an eagle. You know another country exalts himself as an eagle? America. Amen. He says, and though thou set thy nest among the stars like Hollywood, and they're the biggest thing, and also we've gone into space. He says, "Thou that set thy thy thy, uh, 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 thy nest among the stars, thence I will bring thee down." Who says that? The Lord. The Lord. That's when he gets back at Edom. Is right there. You know, you got to understand something about God. He doesn't need a clock reminding him. You know, you sit there and you think that because judgment is not passed fast, you think your heart is is set to do evil. He says. That's one thing about the Lord. you got to understand, he's got all the time in the world. <laughs> That's right. He's got a whole lot of eternity left. Yeah. You know, he's he'll take... Long suffering. <laughs> he's got, he can take... It doesn't matter. He, got, he says it's going to happen. <laughs> so, look, we're going to start now in uh, 22. We got to that part with him. Now, watch in 22, watch what happens here. This is going to be uh, the death of Aaron. Hmm. And uh, the death of Aaron, uh, real fast before we get through this, uh, let's look over at Hebrews chapter 7. Hebrews chapter 7. It's on page 15, 16. Hebrews and chapter 7, and God's ex going to explain something here that we should know. You know, Aaron's a picture of something, obviously. We know the intercessor of Jesus Christ, the high priest. Uh, but look at verse number 23, and it says, And they truly were many priests, talking about the Levites, the sons of Aaron, because they were not, su they, they were not suffered to continue by reason of what? Death. Death. He dies. Aaron's going to die. He, he, he's going to die right here in this passage. He says, what happened? They died. They died by reason of death. And he says, but this man, because he continueth forever, who's he talking about? Okay, Jesus yeah. Christ. Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus Jesus hath an unchangeable priesthood. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, he is able also to save them, the uttermost, that come unto God by him, seeing he, liveth, he ever liveth to make intercession uh, for them. Why'd you read all that? I just like reading that stuff. <laughs> but you have to understand these high priests, they, they weren't subject. They still went the way of the earth. Why? The wages of sin is... Yeah. So guess what they have to do? Yeah. They, that passage has always killed me. The wages of sin is that. That's present tense. So that means you keep sinning, right? Guess what? You keep dying. <laughs> wow. Amen. More life than the cat. Amen. So... 
He says, and, and the congregation of Israel, verse back there in Numbers chapter 20, and the children of Israel, the whole congregation journeyed from Kadesh and came to Mount Hor. And I'm sorry, Satan, I'm talking about God. That's bad. <laughs> Dirty mind at peace. Dirty mind over there now. <laughs> Repent! <laughs> and the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in Mount Ur. I don't want her to get crazy again. Oh, in Cape Hor. It's okay, we'll have an altar call after. Yes. <laughs> By the coast of the land of Edom, saying, now watch this. This is God's sickness. Look what he says. He says, Aaron shall be gathered unto his people. Gathered's going to be gathered unto his people. That's going to be important. For he shall not enter the land which I have given unto the children of Israel. Why is that, Lord? Because you rebelled against my word. Come on. At the water of Mirabah. Wait a second here. I thought that was Moses. Aaron was with him. Yeah. Okay. You know what that tells you? Leaders need to watch out for what they say and what they do. Yep. Yeah. Who they keep company. <laughs> okay. For what they say. What they, do. what they do. Why is that? I'm up here handling the word of God. You know how many people I can mess up? Mm -hmm. That's why it's very important when the, the man who is going to preach should be a man that's called of God because he's going to get up here. Now, not everybody's called, but you want the guy to have some seriousness. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say it like this. Saturday night, Saturday usually, um, I, start my, I start praying up. I start confessing up. I start getting getting ready. Why is that? Because I'm going to come in here the next day and I'm going to preach to people. And I can help their lives. God can use me to help their lives. Or I can hurt their lives. Mm -hmm. yeah. Has a preacher ever hurt you? Yeah. I'm not talking about, you know, you got to convict it. I'm talking about hurt you. I have. I've hurt people. Why? Because I, I can tell you this right now. And every preacher that's out there can say the same thing. There are times where we... Preachers, and I should stop. I'll do it even better. I'll get personal. Where I have preached in the flesh. Yeah. How do you know? I know. Yeah. I know. I can tell you this right now. When I first started, I was a novice. I'm never a pastor before. I'm just a guy that held up a Bible and I had a sign on and wanted to lead people to Christ. And people came and a church started. I was a novice. I never did this before. Okay. When, but you gotta understand when he's saying Timothy, not a novice, he's saying you don't need you don't want to look for a guy out there that has no experience whatsoever with people or anything like that. You gotta take the things practical, not the guys get in there, ah, let me look at this, let me look. And they sit there and then they only look at a few verses and they, they throw the whole Bible into a few verses. You gotta look at the whole thing, it's a guideline. And he says, you know, you don't want a novice. Why? It's because you could be lifted up. Young guys. We, we all, how many of us have teenagers? Haven't you noticed something? By the time, by the, 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 between the ages of 18 and 25, they know everything? Yeah. But how do they, how do they make it in the world? Are they very good or they need a lot of advice, a lot of guidance at that time? Why? It's because they're messed up at that time and they don't have, they're novice. They don't have an experience at that moment. That's why we have to guide them through times. And But most of the time, they're there to correct us and, Tell us what we're doing wrong and what we, you know. That's what my girls do right now. <laughs> so, um, but Aaron, he's going to be, I want you to, that 24 where it says Aaron shall be gathered unto his people. It's going to be very important. Okay, why is that? Because he rebelled against my word at the water of Mirabah. Take Aaron and Eleazar. Take both of them guys. Take him and his son. And bring them up unto the Mount Hor. Unto Mount Hor. Okay? Uh, there's the difference by people. Watch that. Uh, in death, we go up. Bring Aaron and I, bring Aaron up here. Why is that? We go up. He didn't say bring him down here. He said bring him up here. Why? We go up. God wants you to understand something. He's not left you to go down. You go up. You got Jesus? Yeah, you go up. He says, bring them up, up unto Mount Hor. 
and Aaron and 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 strip Aaron of his garments and put them upon Eleazar his son, and Aaron shall be gathered unto his people and shall die there. Now I don't know if you picked up on what I picked up, but there's a vent that's missing in there. He just told him bring bring him up there and take off his garments. Didn't he just say that? Yeah. Okay, they're the priest garments, right? Yep. Now, remember back in Leviticus, it took a long time to put those priest garments on. What did he have to do? In order to go up there, he had to put the garments on. They went yeah. through a whole ceremony. Why? Because, Donna, when you go up to see the Lord, you're not going to go up there naked. You're not going to go up there in those clothes. You're not going up there in your righteousness. You're going to be clothed in his righteousness when you go up to meet the Lord. Amen. 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 What's that tell you? You're going to have good, godly clothes on. What's hey, that? Hey, hey. A white a white robe that God gives those souls that are saved under the altar in uh, Revelation chapter 6. What else? Where else do you see that? On the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus is there and he's in a white raiment. And so is Elijah and so is Moses. And guess what? There's going to come a day where God's going to turn around and come out there and he's going to say, come up hither and you're getting that white robe too and you're going up. Amen. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Okay? You got dre you're going to get dressed up. Good. Okay? Put on the garments. In the, uh, he had to put them on in the sight of the people. Okay? And then all of a sudden, he's going to take them off up there, and he's going to die. Verse 27. And Moses did as the Lord commanded. And they went up into Mount Hor in the sight of all the congregation. The congregation now, he's going to die in front of all of them. So he goes up. He separates himself, and he goes up. He puts it on there, and... And uh, we go up, and, and he goes up, and, and it says, And Moses uh, stripped Aaron of his garments. He strips them and put them upon Eleazar. Now, this is good. And Aaron died there in the top of the mount. And Moses and Eleazar came down from the mount. Now, here's the thing. He goes up on the mount, they strip him. Now, Moses, there's one thing he didn't do. He didn't let those clothes hit the ground. Why? That's important. Those clothes can't hit the ground, so we've got to keep them up. You've got to put, then he put them right on Eleazar. <clears throat> you know why that, that transition happens? Because someday, I'm going to die. I'm going to die. Someday, I'm going to be out of this ministry. Caleb's going to probably put the suit on. And then he's going to take a book and he's going to get up there. And hopefully he's the one that preaches from here. Amen. And, hope, and, and rightfully, when he says amen, guess what we'll say? Amen. 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 What a beautiful thing. What's that? The ministry goes on. The man doesn't matter. Right. See, that's what happens in the ministry. Look, look, look this is how the ministry works. It starts, out as a, it starts out as a movement. And it gains momentum. And then the next thing you know, it starts to become a memorial. And then it becomes a tombstone. Yeah. That's what the ministry happens in the ministry. Why? Because we seem to walk away from God. Ephesus had it all. They were the ones that had apostles. They looked like they, they, they had Christ there in the beginning. And then what happens in the end is it says they lost their first love. Yeah. What happened? They were so interested in their inward love. What are we taking in? We gotta have right doctrine. We gotta have right doctrine. We gotta have right doctrine, right doctrine. And we always had right. We have right doctrine. I mean, that doesn't. That's not gonna do much. We knew somebody comes in here and right away. If somebody came in, you said, "What's your name?" And he says, "My name is Apostle Tim." And right in the right inside, everybody here, we all. <laughs> Why is that? Well, we read enough of the Bible to realize there's no more apostles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right. We know when somebody's a fake coming in. Why? Not because we've we've had so many fakes. It's because we read about the right stuff and they ain't got it. Amen. That's how God wants you to do it. God says, fill yourself up with truth. So when somebody comes through the door, you're going. That's not the guy. Right. They're not. The, they're not that those people. Now it's become very. Uh, we've had problems in, in churches, but don't worry about that. We'll keep going on. The ministry goes on. Okay. It doesn't hit the ground, and the, and the ministry is going to go on. Verse number 29. 
is a passing of the torch. And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they came down. They mourned for Aaron 30 days, even all the house of Israel. Now, there's two things I noticed there. Number one, they went up on the hill. They weren't um, together, were they? The people were down there. Yeah. Aaron, Moses, and Eleazar went up the hill, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, now, if they're up the hill, and Aaron, it says he died and was gathered unto his people. There wasn't anybody up there. Who was he gathered unto? All the saints. Bingo! Amen. There are people. And look, if you'll notice in the Bible, people will die, and it'll say we're gathered under his people. Uh, that's a good sign of saying, hey, man, that person was saved. Amen. That's how you figure out that a guy by the name of Ishmael. Now, most preachers won't say that. What people don't know is he was around Abraham until he was... What, a young man of 15 years old? What do you think? Abraham turned around and said, I go to hell. <laughs> no, it's no. his son. And in the very end, you know what it says about Ishmael? He was gathered unto his people. But it always says he was buried. He died, he was buried, and he was gathered unto his people. How can you do that one? You see, what God does is he throws a monkey wrench in so it doesn't make sense to... The natural man. It doesn't make sense until you do a little study and you realize the spiritual content. What's that? See, sometime you're going to die. But you're not dying alone. No. You know what you got? You got Jesus Christ and then there's the heavenly host. Amen. You'll be in with the heavenly host as soon as you go in. What are you doing? You're gathered unto your people. The people of the earth ain't going to be there. It's going to be the spiritual people. Amen. They're your people. You know, this church family, this is our people. The other thing, if you haven't noticed it, look down there at 29, and it says, And when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, they mourned for Aaron 30 days. Even the whole house of, you know, people are nicer to people after they're dead. They're arguing, hey, look, they're arguing, Yvonne, they're kicking her out of, her, out of their houses. They turn around, they're getting mad at her, and all, you know, you ought to not talk about this and all that stuff, your religion and all this other thing. And they're like, they talk about that, then she dies. You know what they're going to say? She was such a sweet thing. <laughs> I meant to go there. Woman's over there sitting in her house, and you know how many people call? Not one. That's true. Oh, I know her so well. You wouldn't even call her when she was alive. People are nicer than dead people. Right. Let me go respect. I gotta go to calling hours to show my respect. Why wouldn't you show your respect when they were alive and in front of you? Yeah. Instead, you had to use your pepper. <laughs> you know what I just gave you? Knowledge. That's actually hard preaching. Yeah. What's that? That caught you. Caught you. Mm -hmm. yeah, to do yeah, what? Yeah. Wait a second. You know, I, I can give it to you like this. People got parents and never called their parents. Mm -hmm. And the parents die. Oh, I love them. Oh, I love them. Oh, I love them. You didn't even call. Yeah. You know, I said to my. You know what I said to my wife? I said to her. I said if uh, if she never she dies before me. And I have to go to a nursing home or something like that because the kids won't take care of me. You're not going to the nursing home. Whoever that woman is that's taking care of me in that nursing home, you're getting all my money. <laughs> you're, you're, Brian won't let you go to a nursing home, just to let you know. <laughs> I'm going to drive my car off a cliff. <laughs> We're nicer to dead people than we are the living. Right. People kicked you around when you were alive, and then when you die, you all of a sudden you're a good man. Right. Oh. Everybody's a good man. Yeah, nice things to say to yeah. that. I don't know. I, I haven't been to a funeral where somebody got up and said, look, this guy was a jerk. Thank you. Guy was a jerk. They never say that. I never heard one. No, they cry about it. Yeah. Yeah. You know what it is? They're going to say it. Believe me, I told Yvonne, I said, make sure you tell your family. They feel the good only thing that, sh make sure they know, because when they come into that preaching and they come in there, I don't want any, they're going to say, well, she was such a saint, she was a church, that woman was a perfect saint, and I get up there, and I'm going to talk about Yvonne, the dirty woman that needed, that needed salvation. <laughs> you bad. You need a, okay. Amen. Amen. It was a good teaching. Look, I'm only playing. Yeah, we Believe don't. me, she's already heard what I'll preach, and yeah. she knows me what I'll preach. Yeah. But uh, I will say this. I already know the verse I would always preach for Yvonne. It's Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. Why? 
because she always brings that verse out. The Lord's hand is not so short that he cannot save, Amen. or his ear heavy that he cannot hear. But your iniquity, your iniquity has separated you from your God and your sin. Isaiah chapter, Isaiah 59, verses 1 and 2. I'll preach a whole message about that. Why? Because Yvonne tried to get her whole family saved, and they would have none of that, many of them. And she loved them enough to do that, and they're going to come in and say she was righteous and all these other things when they have no idea, they don't even know her to say that. If anybody knew you like God knows you, you know what they would do? They'd run away. It's a good thing that people don't know us like God knows us. And it's a beautiful thing that we know the God inside each of us so that we can actually love each other because we're all loving the Lord. Isn't that the best thing about it? Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord God, for the reading. I thank you for the teaching of numbers, Lord Father. I thank you, Lord God, for teaching us, getting to the practical knowledge of these things and the spiritual look at it. Thanking you, Lord God, for the things that are happening in these passages to form our lives, to better our lives. Let's be nice to each other while we still have the voice to speak to each other. And be uh, to be nice to each other, be kind to each other, Lord. And most of all, Lord God, let us be merciful to each other. Lord, not desiring the things of the flesh, but desiring the things of thee and the things of the spirit. Thank you, Lord, for being good to us, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Hey, Rochelle, you tell that boy to get in church this, this week, okay? See me? Ha, 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 ha.